Let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness to us, preparing us for your Son, and giving us your servant and prophet Moses as our guide uh, to your Son. We ask that you may today come with our deeper understanding, your goodness and care for us, and may we fully grasp your love in all ways. We ask that you trust this time to you, the hands of our mother as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thy thy arms, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So before we begin, I put down two notes uh, for myself to talk about what we completed in class. But I forgot why they're important. So hopefully it makes sense to you why they're important, and if not, um, it's a good introduction, I guess. <laughs> so the first one I have here that I forgot to mention, I don't remember the conversation, but I forgot to mention apparently that part of um, we get some of the uh, knowledge of Scripture of our needs and how they understand the Old Testament references is that Christ spent 40 days from the resurrection until the ascension, explaining to the apostles what, who he is, what he's done all that stuff. I think, I think, remember correctly, there was a question how do we know that some of these things translate what they mean? How do we know some of the symbolism and the meaning of the Old Testament? And part of that is there's more than just those couple times mentioned in the Gospel of Luke. But, but since there's 40 days where Christ appeared to the apostles explaining, talking to them, and showing them what the Old Testament um, teaches about it, points to himself. Um, it's not recorded for us, but it's that 40 days where they, where they decided the Holy Spirit and other things the apostles were kind of revealed exactly where the Old Testament. So all that stuff's in there, it's passed on word of mouth. From the apostles to their their disciples, the, the church fathers received that from the apostles. Um, so one note does that make sense to you, everybody? Mm-hmm. Okay. Another note I have is I have a note that should explain further our church architecture. So, um, and so so there are variations, of course, but there are principles that can be applied. And so there are, there are kind of five principles that. Because um, we were talking about last time, two weeks ago, <clears throat> how every God Himself designed the first church, the first time of heaven. And so, when it comes to building beautiful churches, when it comes to Catholic architecture, yes, there are differences between culture and time, place, and material, but there are principles. And the first principle it should be inspired by Scripture. If you're going to ignore scripture or another long run, so you can go on and say, you know, we have the design that begins with God, so we start with scripture. It should point to God. So the way things are arranged, from the tabernacle to the decoration to the, uh, the symbols, to a point to God. Uh, how they do that in a different way, to a point to God in some ways. Um, yeah, the points to, to, to ourselves, to each other, it's the wrong orientation. The point of that. Um, it teaches the faith. And so part of the reason why we have the symbols of the church was is so that the church itself should be expressive of what we believe. The reason why we have these stained glass windows and images and paintings and uh, things around the church and just plan of decoration. It is an explanation of what we believe. Now, again, our faith is so rich. You know, if you have a church dedicated to the angels, you focus on the angels. A church dedicated to the Trinity, you know, different architects, over different things. But it should be faith. It was just random. There is a chapel in Texas um, which was decorated by an atheist uh, who committed suicide, by uh, rest of his soul. And literally, the paintings are pure black. Oh, of course. Hmm? They're, they're pure black with sprinkling of red. Ooh. I forget the guy's name. There's a very famous chapel over in Houston. 
because there's a famous smart art, modern art, so you've got smart artists paying. Interesting, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, it should be the best we have at all. And obviously, this is going to differ for the time and place and availability and. Um, <clears throat> No, but give the we're gonna give more the best we have. And it should be understood if you've readily seen it in the book. It should be really interesting or only beautiful to some people or only in some cultures. But there are certain things, it doesn't matter where you go, you look at the good that's that's gorgeous. Other things you look at it and go, I understand that. <laughs> If you actually want to explain to you why it's beautiful, why it matters, why it's nice, it's the wrong tag for a church. Um, yeah, there's, there's different kinds of you, there's different ways to do it, obviously. But everyone should be able to walk in there and say, it's beautiful. This points to God, this reminds me of that. Because the church should, should be is, a, a lives in heaven itself. Um, but because God lives there. Um, and so again, within these principles, a lot of other, a lot of different styles and these more simple churches and more ranked churches, and of course, if it's too ornate and, and, and too gaudy, you can also be bad, you can also ignore the faith and, and not be beautiful and all that stuff. It's, but these being principles, this is important um, because if it doesn't point to God, teach the faith. It's based on scripture. Um, it's not a good church. Um, or at least to be improved. So that is my notes. Hopefully it makes sense. Before you go up there, any other questions or concerns or comments? Or? I do. Our church is next Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Good. <laughs> on the point that you made about point to God. Yes. So what about these churches that I've gone in, and I don't know, it's just me, and correct me, mm -hmm. where they have the tabernacle off to the side, and they've got the altar and everything there in the front. To me, I don't know, the way I always viewed it, the tabernacle should be the focus. And I would agree with you, because that literally is God. <laughs> well, and what irked yeah. me was there's a church that I know of, they went through a whole major remodeling during COVID, and they actually moved the tabernacle off to the side. <laughs> yes, so where it comes from is there is a modern idea. I, I can't trace and I look for it. Um, it kind of peters out. Uh, where sometime in, in the mid 20th century, there became this idea which grabbed hold of certain intellectual circles that you want to separate adoration from the mass, which I don't understand how you can or why you would. Um, if the Mass is not for adoration, the Mass is this union with Christ. Which is true, but you can't do it without adoration because it's God. And so there is this desire to very deliberately separate, and you can find it in certain writers uh, who say we should be separating this adoration and sacrifice. But the point of sacrifice adoration, so I know that that's an impossibility. Um, I don't know where it came from, where it started, I can't, I can't trace it. Um, and I don't know if it was, it was in some famous, at the time, author or a spiritual writer, because uh, it's certainly not in a church document, but all of a sudden you'll find the idea kind of popping up and everyone assumes that it's an established um, principle. And it is something that was around enough that churches began to separate uh, the tabernacle and the altar. Um, and I don't understand why. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. And that's part that I wrestle with. So I guess the second part of that question is when you go to a mass, to me, I wrestle with that because how can I go to a mass and see that? And yet they push Jesus off to the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's my view. Maybe it's a simpleton view, but how do you get past that? I guess when I mean, I'm going so, to there. So what I would say is, is recognize that our Lord and the Mass, that, so you come to the church, you reverence the tabernacle of the altar. 
So let's say you know, this is I'm coming here, have it on the side somewhere. I can go to the church, or the flat, the tabernacle, and then, you know, reference the altar, by the altar. Not, not ignore the tabernacle. So first of all, you make sure that, the, the, that you recognize who's there, and you give the Lord the honor he deserves. The second thing that I would do is that because the Mass is a sacrifice, the Mass is the way you worship God and adore God most perfectly, mm-hmm. um, you join in, assuming that the, the Mass is being said properly and being done correctly, following the liturgy, following the what Christ set up to, to order to us to adore God. Um, if that's being done correctly, and simply join your heart and you know, offer that. Um, and if you notice it's not being done correctly or it's not in such a way where you can't pray, um, you do the best you can, and what you do is you offer the Lord your own hurt, your own pain, and reparation uh, for what's being done there to him. Um, hopefully, though, I mean, hopefully what you have is goodwill um, with faulty principles. But sometimes you don't have that. Sometimes you do have bad will or people who just don't care much. Um, but even there, I think it, all, it often begins with goodwill, people trying to do the right thing, but people who are very badly formed. Um, yeah, yeah I, I've, I've seen that before. I mean, I could yeah. never say until you brought it up, but that point to God, and I've noticed that in a lot of the, and you're more, I don't want to say liberal, but the, those dioceses that are more trying to modernize, I guess, modernize. they're moving to that. Right, yeah. And, and I've noticed that so when the they... the church is pointing to right toward to heaven. That's why you notice the are very, very tall. And the blue, blue, they're pointy, normally. <laughs> um, and they're also see decoration. It, it is more the higher up you go and the closer to the altar you go. They're always pointing toward God. Um, but, so it was oriented toward the tabernacle and toward heaven. And so you step in the church, and your heart automatically goes that way. The... Churches built with modest understanding tend to point toward us. We say we're a communal meal, or that's about sharing, it's about being together, we're the body of Christ. Um, which again is true, but it's missing what makes the body of Christ, namely Christ. Um, and it's missing our life, which is Christ. Um, you end up with some false understandings. You end up ignoring humans entirely. And this is this is part of the reason, not, not just this. Um, but, but this faulty emphasis on us is part of the reason why today there is such a lack of, of, of belief in the Eucharist. Because um, mm-hmm. you believe you come to Mass simply to share, to share with each other, the community, which is, you, you do come back to that. It's important. But it's not the first important. It has to flow from our reading of God, our love for God, and our life of God. But if we try to start here, you're not going to understand what the point of that is in there. Because honestly, if, we, if I was designing a people sharing, coming together, to care for each other, love each other, I wouldn't design that. In Denver, um, yeah. the diocese in Denver, their churches are all in the round. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. really crazy. Yeah. Yeah, we went and to the one in Plano, Texas. When we were in vacation last year in Seattle, there was one like that. And I didn't know where to genuflect or turn because it was like the, yeah, the tabernacle was right in the middle. And, the, and then everybody was seated like, yeah, it was, it was weird. That's how the one in Flagstaff is. Is They're it? A brand new church. They just built it like, what, seven it's or eight years ago? Around. It's empty. You see, it's, it's, it's not. Shape. It's not. Like a bowl, but there's um, seating on both sides and the front, so yes, it, it is round. It's How also a very it's large long. church. It's so distracting. Yeah. 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 Looking up and seeing like the priest and the tabernacle, you're looking and seeing. You can sit people. on the oh, side of the me. altar yeah. instead of in front of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's weird. The one in Plano, they have a <laughs> big, huge pink crystal hanging from the ceiling. Oh my goodness. Really? It must have been. Fascinated. It was like four times as big as that light. <laughs> and then when they brought the cross in, it was this big. Uh, and, and, and so, what, what you assume, you assume you know, these people who built it, the people who were there, have good intentions in their hearts. Yeah. But a faulty understanding. Uh, 
Um, and, and so you don't assume people are malicious or bad or jerks. I thought it was something in the 70s they were saying that that the churches in the round and the Catholic Church was around the 1970s. It, it was, but there were some of the back in the 40s, honestly. Oh, really? mm -hmm. um, and there are some more modern ones. That you went, yeah, um, yeah. You, you can go back and find some interesting stuff happening in the 30s and 40s. That's, and, and so the, the roots of what happened in the 70s go back to the 1900s, honestly. You, you had some of the, that, the, already that, that question, those changes, and, and that stuff are happening. It took call for the 70s. Um, but you already had that question, and the reason why it took off so much was because it was being discussed and contemplated and experimented <clears throat> in the 40s and 50s and 30s and 20s and or later. <laughs> and I think the other thing to take into consideration is a church is a big investment. Mm -hmm. If there is a particular priest and council that is there when it's built and everything, that's the resource you have until... Right. Replace right. it. Right. Yeah, so. <laughs> and so it's, it's just simply that when, when we build church, we'll have to crack church. These are principles we look at. Mm -hmm. And these aren't simply things that, that is, is based, it's not simply based upon some of this taste. You know, it, so it's really a taste. Right? Whether you want angels in the sanctuary or the Blessed Virgin Mary or both, okay, fine, you know, taste. Or which staff the Virgin Mary they want to knock or pat them on the Lord or the fine. Um, but these things are not certain. Uh, or the, the building itself isn't going to do what's supposed to be done. Which again goes back to scripture, which is this is a vision of heaven. And going to the church should be a vision of heaven. It should, should be uh, an experience of this is heaven. Um, and this, this is who I am in heaven. Um, and if it's not that, it's not doing the job. It's not that that's supposed to be. Supposed to be, it's not, it's not a meeting house where you meet together. It is a place of worship, of adoration, and of union with God. And because we are human beings who understand through symbol and through experience and living, you need these principles in place. And if we can't articulate them, understand what's going on, you do notice the difference. You know, if it's not scriptural, if it's not best we have, if it's cheaply made and not pointing to God, it's pointing to ourselves. You don't know why people can say there's something strange about this building. Uh, or, or, or it feels very sterile. It feels, you don't understand what's going on. It's just we could say there's something off. Um, like a tabernacle off to the side. Yeah, um, maybe. Um, sometimes you inherit that. Sometimes you, you can't do anything about that. Um, sometimes it, it's. So sometimes you, know, you get the best you can. I probably could have accepted it. If I had not known later that it was done during the recent remodel, <laughs> no. it's like, what were you guys thinking? And then it made me even more. I'm thinking, well, where's the bishop in this? You know, why is he allowing that to happen? Not our. It wasn't our diocese, but I'm just saying, just something. Something I came across. And, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get off track. No, um, okay. Okay. And so <laughs> yeah, this, is, this, is, this is kind of what I said. Just a brand note from, from last week that. This one, the contact is kind of, it's kind of gone, so. But, I don't know what we're talking about, so one, here we go. One, I got one more qu quick question. Please. Yeah. We, so we, when we walk in, and the tabernacle's off the side, we genuflect, acknowledging Jesus yes. off to the side. It is what it is. What happens, like, the, and I was thinking about this when we had service, when you had Jesus out of the tabernacle mm -hmm. in the back room, how do, when we come in, do we still... So you reference the place where God rests. Um, and so the principle is that where God lives is also holy. It's one of the reasons why our body is there, because we have the temple of God. Um, where, where God lives is also holy. That's why you know, we treat the body with respect and after that. You don't know, just kick it down in a ditch, you know, <laughs> you know throw it out of the field and gambles again. Because the body's holy. The body was baptized, the communion, it's the temple of God. Um, and so the altar, because that is where the sacrifice takes place, is reverence. The way you reverence it is by a vow. Mm -hmm. So it's a distinct act of reverence, but simply just a vow to say, that is Calvary. <clears throat> that is the place where bread and wine become God himself. Um, and so there is a sign of reverence. 
And so, for instance, there are places, uh, even our diocese, the tabernacle is on the side. And so what the bishop will do, what we'll do, is we'll come in, uh, for instance, our mass, okay, by the tabernacle first, out of the altar, and we get mass. And so you make both signs of reference. And so that would be absolutely appropriate for a lay person to do as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, the church is off the closet. So let me give you a time where it's good, actually. So there are places, for instance, in Europe, to become so touristy that to have a tabernacle in the church would actually be irreverent. Um, they have what? So they become so touristy. It becomes such a place of tourists to look at. They're, they're architects, right? Right. Um, and so many places in the Vatican, for example, there is one, um, at a, there is one uh, Eucharistic chapel. And the rest, the Eucharist is not in there. And the reason why is to protect the Eucharist. Um, because I, I have you kick, kick everyone out and say, no one can ever miss the church here ever, unless you're going to pray, which you can't even control that. Um, or you, because, because people are, don't know any better, uh, you kind of have one place set aside for the Eucharist. Yeah, I figure you do that with a lot of the chapels in Rome. They, they yeah, a lot of the bigger, even, I, I think, all, even in uh, New York State, it impacts the people the same way. Where there is a Eucharistic chapel in the back from the main body of the church, it is just because so many people who, who um, I think St. Patrick's. Yeah. Yeah, St. Patrick's in New York, I think it's the same thing. Uh, I remember when I was in Rome, there was a, just a quick story. Um, there was, I can't remember the name of the church, but they had the chapel to the back and they actually had one of the Italian, I don't know, what were they called? Canter Caraberries or whatever. I can't remember, but standing there, and when you wanted to go back to the chapel, he would ask you if you're Catholic mm, okay. before he would let you in. If you weren't, then he wouldn't let you go in. I don't know if that was. Yeah, I kind of just kind of felt. I thought I was just kind of filtering. And, and, and probably some people would walk out and have pictures and then make it all right to the Lord. Right. And so, yeah, there, there might be reasons where it would actually be a good thing to have the Eucharist off in another place yeah. to protect our. I remember seeing that. Uh, but probably not so much here. In the United States. Yeah. I haven't seen it. But Maybe. But All right. Sorry. sorry. I didn't mean to get off the track there. No, this is... is but, but you went there. I would never point to God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's then turn to our current. So at last we left our hero. <laughs> Moses was up the mountain. He was... He could have done twice actually, the person went back and bought down part of the wall. He goes back up and he's on the mountain for how many days and nights? This is an important number. Is he repeated a lot? He's up on the mountain for 40 nights. Let's read together Exodus 32, verses 1 through 6. Did I have a volunteer willing to read aloud? I'll read it. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods. Who shall go before us as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt? We do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a molten calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it and Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Well, you love it. <laughs> so remember the context. Remember the people of the Sin Templates. They've seen what God, they've seen the Red Sea. They've seen the pillar of fire and the pillar of fire. They've been given the map. Right? It's not like it's the first time they've interacted with God. They've been at the foot of the mountain, the mountains trembled. They've been told, they've told Moses, you know what? You talk to God, we're not going to do it. You do it for us. You would think for a month and ten, to ten, ten days that they could call themselves. They don't. And after 40 days, they get 
Mm-hmm. Nervous and worried, we say, okay, well, it's taking too long. We want God. They know that they are there. They interact with God, think with God. And they say, well, this is what we want is he wants someone to replace Moses. Certain rabbinic commentators say when they say gods, they don't mean literally gods, they mean leaders. It seems to be a little more complicated than that. Probably, there's probably more than one group is what's going on. Uh, because if you're looking at the words we use, you'll see Aaron was focusing on Yahweh. You have people who focus on gods, plural. You want gods, uh, plural. But people see focus on a god. Because you have these people who become, become largely pagan over the 400 years where they were in Egypt. They're used to seeing cats, used to seeing uh, all these other different pagan gods. Right? They've been in And in their mind, Yahweh is one god of a this is the big fight for the Jewish people for over most thousand years, up until the Babylonian captivity, where it finally sinks and there's only one God of the earth here. That's always being said to them. You always have this struggle where you have these other shrines, these other places where other gods are worshipped, where other sacrifices are done to other gods. You have God of Israel who has other gods too. You have, maybe you have the great God, Yahweh, and the other lesser. And it is this strong fight, and this this over and over again throughout Scripture, where the prophets keep saying, "There's only one God; it's Yahweh. There's only one God is the Lord. There's only one God. Worship Him alone." And so you have here, as you have here, it's probably the reason why the sin of it confuses. You have this uh, these different factions that are embroiled. You have these different responses. They get tired of waiting for Moses to show them God. And so they say to Aaron, you tell us who God is, you can make us an idol. Make us an image. Make, make us, show us who God is. You show us who God is, we can worship God. And for some of them, it is the God. It is the money comes. For some of them, it is Yahweh. For some of them, it is the um, One commentator I read, Bishop Neck, uh, the, um, says that the reason why Aaron asks for the gold first and then builds the cap mm-hmm. is he's thinking, according to this commentator, he thinks that they're so attached to the gold that they refuse. Yeah. He's hoping so this is the layout of the white heaven white. He says, Give me your gold from your wives and your daughters. And that he thinks they're going to say, Ah, no way we won't. And when they don't, he kind of like freaks out and just does what they want. It's not in there, but it is a Interesting idea. So look at why it's built. Make the cat. Aaron says, This is Yahweh. Over here, whenever you see the Lord in capitalizations, that is a uh, reference to a uh, the Jewish uh, reverence for the Holy Angel of God, where they would substitute it for it. It was capitalized in the Old Testament. Usually, it's not. Adonai, usually it's Yahweh. I did double check on this case. It does say, yeah, Aaron does say, this is Yahweh. This is God. Tomorrow is a feast day to Yahweh. Tomorrow is a feast day to Yahweh. So, when you said you double check, where would you double check that? Um, a, a Hebrew is linear Bible. So if you go online, um, there are Hebrew and Greek interlinear Bibles. And what they will do is they'll give you word for word translation uh, uh, of the. So we'll have an English and a Hebrew, so you can see exactly what's being said. Um, if, if you don't know much Hebrew or Greek, you can figure out you know, from the English verse, looking at the Hebrew verse, Greek verse, and figure out exactly. Let us say Adonai, let us say Yahweh. Adonai in Hebrew looks like this. Yahweh looks like this. And so, and then they, with English translation, it's a lot easier too. So, which is, is a Lord as Adonai, a Lord as a Yahweh. In this case, Aaron does say this is a feast for Yahweh. Tomorrow is a feast day for Yahweh. In other words, this is Yahweh. How do you get a calf? I mean, 
God says we were made in, in his image. Where did he, I mean, why a calf? Because this would have been something new. This would have been the, the Egyptian uh, representative. Oh, okay. Um, so you would have used the sacred cow, cow the sacred okay. uh, images there. Um, so in the, in the, the culture around them, this, these were for some of their gods. As we just pick something, I would like, okay, yeah, here's this, this symbolizes Yahweh. In his mind, he's probably thinking, well, at least it's still the right God. But who cares how it's depicted? You know. Hmm. And, and you'll, you'll see people who will say, well, but no. It doesn't really matter how it's depicted. You know, God in the back of the body way, any symbol is good as another. Any image is good as another. It's not because God's given us images. God's given us symbols. God's given us, and it's probably just one. Um, and people go off. I don't know, but crazy fun fancy. And so they just walk the cat. And they offer sacrifices and all costs. So you make covenant with God. They worship God. They had a feast of the Lord. And now we're going to rejoice and celebrate what we were God. There's three problems here. The obvious problem, of course, is idolatry. And it's that's where people you know, normally focus on, is the fact that they're made false gods. Um, and in fact, um, that verse there, verse, which verse is it? Uh, verse 4. These are, so, your translation, David, actually, and the translation I have here, New American, translated the singular. Uh, this is your God. But it is, these are your, these are your gods. And it is, again, the, the Hebrew, look at the Hebrew, it is plural. Um, and it's very clearly plural, not simply the, um, the royal form of God. Uh, it very clearly is God's, because the, the adjective is plural, or the, the verb is plural. These are your gods. It's interesting, there's only one Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, but the people do say, these are your gods. And so there definitely is this faction where the worship happens. Where they're substituting someone in the place of God. Where God has not given them what they want, and so they decide, well, they want their own way, they want to do things their way, and so they put idols in place of God. The first problem, of course, is a, is a bit of bad guy. So they're placing God. Pope Benedict has two other things he points out, two other problems. And you'll find this in his book called The Spirit of the Liturgy, as well as various homilies he gave his pope. <clears throat> if you look at this, something for Aaron at least, Aaron is not trying to worship a false god. Aaron is saying, This is we're trying to work now. Well, this is the back, get me the best we can. What can we do? Okay, it's not perfect, but what else I got? This is the only thing I can do. Is, is at least it's something. At least some of the people there were, were, were going to be worshiping uh, Yahweh through this cat. Uh, apparently, the Levites were among them. But there's some other people there who were willing to say, well, you know, okay. You know, everyone knows what he's doing. He's talking to God after all. He's, he's Moses' brother. Okay. This is, this is some of them. But you still have the problem where. You're trying to make God brought down to our level. You're trying to say God is at our level. God is something I can control. God is something I keep in the box. The words of C.S. Lewis, God is not a tame mind. <laughs> but what do you want to tame? You want to tame it. You want to tame God with your approach so you can dictate to it. So this is the words of Benedict. They want to bring God down to their own world. So what they can see and understand. So worship, therefore, is not only going up to God. But not us on the mountain going up there, approach God, going to see God, having to inform ourselves to him. But it's drawing God down to one's own world. Now, the, 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 one of the problems that Aaron's doing here, Aaron's sin, is he's saying we can force God to be what we want. God has to conform to me. He must be there when he's needed. He must be the kind of God, it's supposed to be God, God that is needed. Mm -hmm. 
man is using. In reality, he was not outwardly discernible, he's placed himself above it. Right? Because if God is there at my back, if God has to come to me in a way that I like or I understand, if God is, can come to where I can decide the feast day celebration and how we worship him, but who's in charge? It's me. And so even if Aaron is trying to worship God, he's trying to worship God according to his own choices. He's trying to make God below himself. So this is still a very serious problem. He does not have a worship. It is an attempt to control God and an attempt to say that the Lord is less than we are. So if it's not idol worship, it's the blossom. It's, it, it's a, also a very grave sin. There's a third problem. This is a problem of liturgy, problem of, of, of worship, problem of, of how you find out where to go. Again, the words of the Pope. The worship of the golden calf is a self-generated cult. Moses stays away for too long. God himself becomes inaccessible. People just fetch him. Worship becomes a feast the community gives to itself, a festival of self affirmation. Instead of being worship of God, it is a circle closed in on itself. Eating, drinking, and making merry. The dance around the golden calf is an image of this self seeking worship. It's a kind of banal self edification. The narrative of the golden calf is a warning about any kind of self initiated and self seeking worship. Ultimately, it's no longer concerned with God and giving oneself a nice little alternative world, manufactured from one's own resources. Liturgy really does then become pointless, just fooling around. Which the worse it becomes an apostasy from the living God, an apostasy of the sacrilegious sacral disguise. All that's left in the end is frustration and a feeling of emptiness. <laughs> Going back again to our point of the church that points to God, it points to us. It's, it's a false church. The same thing can happen in liturgy. It can happen the way you worship, the way you come to God, the way we, you know, if the stuff we're doing in Mass is about affirming the community, making us feel good, helping us to see who we are, <coughs> this is a false worship. And I can do so in very pious words. I can do this with intention. So Aaron is not trying to affect God, apparently. Not trying to, you know, set to the false god. What he's doing is he's willing to participate in this liturgy, this worship that is really about themselves. Where they say, this is how we worship God, this is who God is, this is how to come to God, this makes us feel good, this is how we understand who God is. And rather than saying we have to conform ourselves to God, we have to come and know God a certain way, we have to form our hearts and minds and soul with God is set. But everything that the nation of God can form for themselves. It's a good thing this idea has disappeared from our public right? Mm. Yeah. Well, no, this is a problem, of course, that's very prevalent today. We want to very much, even in the Mass, make it about ourselves. And the reason why it's important to follow the things of the rumors, to follow the church laws, to follow what's being said in the Mass, is because it's not from us. The Mass is founded by Christ. Embellished by the apostles who were established by Christ. So to simply come along, even if it's, it's a total intention, and even if it's something that's beautiful, even if it's something that's gorgeous, everything in the Mass literally has to be about God, has to be based upon what God has given us. Because by the very nature, the Mass is us conforming ourselves to God, worshiping God, coming to God, coming to know God. And God has given us and given us. It's important what we do with it. It's important how we offer the Mass. It's important the different rubrics. And yes, people can make them gods too. I mean, people get so lost in the rubrics if they ignore God. It happens. Absolutely. Um, but the reason why we can't ignore the rubrics, the reason why we, we have to do things in a certain way, is because God has established us. And the roots of the Mass go back to Exodus. The roots of the Mass go back to the Testament. Right, or the Lord, when he says the first Mass starts with what? Passover Savior. Passover Son. It's in the context of, of the Old Testament. But this does this come down and say, ignore the Old Testament entirely, let's sit down and have a nice meal again. Worship 
Again, it's the Old Testament roots start there, the principles start there, and he builds on that. And he gives us the words to say, the actions to do, and, and this is why we, why we have to come and inform ourselves in a particular way of God, worship God in a particular way. And he comes, he dies in the cross for us. And we try to reinvent this, try to say, well, let's do worship by our own way. Let's make this about ourselves. Let's let you know, these people understand it this way. Let's, let's change these things. Worship with what we have. Even if it's well intentioned, even if it is an attempt and a desire to make things meaningful. If it's not about God, it's not doing what God asks us to do, it's the wrong thing. <coughs> and so, one of the lessons of what we can is for us, we have to make certain that we come to Mass, we come to the Word of God, we come to pray. We do so with this humility. And we do so with this recognition that I need to conform myself to God. I need to make my heart, my mind, my actions conform to him. God became man not just to come down to me, but to show us how to live a human life, how to pray, how to walk, how to speak, to make a whole life conform to him. And if we expect to remain the way we are, and have God changed more in our culture, it's the goal we have. We just start spouting out people. Golden calf! Just as long as I think the Levites are okay. We'll come back in a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, please. In here, in this, you made this, and you're kind of you're touching on, but I, yeah, please. Maybe you can dumb it down a little bit for me. So, when you talk about here, it says the narrative of the golden calf is a warning about any kind of self initiated and self seeking worship, mm -hmm. which is still going on today. Yes, that's 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 what the, the Pope puts it in his book on the mass. So could you clear, kind of clarify what you mean by self-initiated, self-seeking, just so Yeah, um, so self-initiated would be where we say, well, in our time and place, we don't have to, we're, we're so much smarter than they were in the old days. We can do this differently now. Uh, or we say, um, I'm trying to think of an example in practice speaking. Um, so you'll see, for example, there were experimentation with the mass, where the idea was, well, people in a modern era, you know, aren't like people in the Middle Ages, aren't like people in the early church. And so therefore, we're going to use different elements. Rather than bread and wine, we're going to use grape juice and pizza. <coughs> or <Welcome mass. laughs> uh, but, but it's been attempted. Or you see, look at certain, you can go online and type in bad liturgy, and you'll, you'll see people dressed as clowns. Uh, or people dressed in the colors of the local sports figures. Um, the sports teams. Be, because Sports is a celebration, or you see someone come into mass on uh, the hoverboard, you know, the, the skateboard, <laughs> because it, it's it's cool and exciting, and the kids don't like it. Um, and it might be true. Like, are you meaning like the priest, like Gen wearing the sports <laughs> team? <laughs> yes. Gen General the priest. Yes. 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 Another thing too, um, we lived in Flagstaff for a while and there was one priest that was kind of conservative and one priest that was liberal and you would see people walk out of mass during the homily if they said something that was kind of political, um, especially on um, on the conservative priest, like people would walk out of his masses. That also depends on how you interpret it. It's just because people are so divided politically. They're not focused on God. Just to keep God. Out, though, yeah. Well, and the thing is, too, I mean, yeah, it, it can happen on, on both sides, absolutely. I mean, you, you could even certainly, um, you know, if I were to say, you know what, everyone, we're, 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 we're too lenient, we have to be the entire time. And the original language is Greek, because everything's being Greek now on the English and Greek. <laughs> I'm still making it up. <laughs> yeah, it might be good. It might be a gorgeous ceremony. It doesn't have to be silly. You know? But if I'm making it up because I, I, I want to do it, 
where it feels good. And I say, we're going we're to flatten ourselves you know, seven times the mass, prostrate ourselves seven times the mass. Well, great. But not mass. You know, it might, might be, you know, very conservative tradition. But if it's not the mass, on mass. Um, so the, the point is, does it come from what God has found? Is it about him, the point of him? Is us informing ourselves to him? If, if it comes to us, you know, um, if our rubrics for a good mass are make me feel good, I like it, um, or you know, this is what, what we're used to, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. uh, I like what I'm used to, we're, we're, we're used to it. Yeah. But yeah. being a convert, Please. I was like ignorant because sure. I had never been really to a traditional mass, so I didn't even know what I was missing. I didn't know. I mean, you know, everybody's hugging in the aisles and all this stuff, and, and it was like, it seemed weird to me, but I, I was just totally ignorant. I was just doing what everybody else was doing. Forget the conference. I, I, I would say these days, have the priest work. Um, I, I would say a lot of the priests are really well attention. are really doing what, what they believe is right, are really doing their best to honor and serve God. Just the wrong. Yeah, but I, I mean, I was like, I had no idea that what I had been doing was, you know. Yeah, no, of course, yeah. No one tells you. And you go and that's what you see. Or if you're a priest and you're in seminary, you're told in seminary, this is the way you do it. Mm -hmm. um, or worse, you're just told, make up as you go. That's what happens, actually. Um, yeah. and, and many times in the seminary, uh, the priests were told simply, you can read, there's a mass, there's a mass for And so they would hear, you know, some. Famous liturgists say, well, you can do it, just make it conform to people. Or the people like this, people come. And so they would see, you know, famous figure, Father X, and doing a clown mass, and the your path. They go, okay, well, I'll try that. You know, because it brings people in. People come to mass stuff. Or, 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 or they've got they support, maybe they do a clown mass, and maybe the bill do a lot of hugging, and, you know, people gather together and share their story. Or maybe they'll experiment where they have, you know, the Table like this, and every other family, all the people come then because it's, it's different. It's what occurs. And, and it might not be, be malicious, it might not be a liberal thing, but it's not about Christ, though. Even if it's not bad intention. Yeah, yeah um, history, that as the missionaries moved out and converted people and uh, Pope Gregory comes to mind too. They adopted some of the local customs to make it more palatable for the, the indigenous population to accept. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so always we're an adaptation. There's always sort of like architecture and materials used, always. But the principles have to come across. And, and so there's always a balance, right? Because it, so Great Christmas trees come from the German culture um, because they worship trees, but it was way of baptizing. And so when you, so when people who came and came saw the Christmas trees, it wasn't about there were also German gods too. It was about using this tradition, these symbols to point back to them. God that we all for everything. But it wasn't replacing any of the mass, it wasn't changing the mass, it wasn't changing what God had established. It was taking certain music, taking certain certain maybe decorating all the vessels. But the basic stuff, foundation, comes from the scripture and the compass. That's the, there's a, again, principle of the place. But you, but you go too far, and our time went too far. Uh, and so you go, for example, in Japan and China, the Jesuits went too far for some of the uh, Some of them are trying to do mass with rice bread and rice wine. We're told that's not mass. You know? um, but they were trying that because that was what the people knew. Um, and so again, I don't think it was ill intention. Um, some cases it might have done, but I think in many cases it was people going, okay, well, this is what people get, and so let me make this what our channel, or because you get what we're saying. Um, and so there is a way to do that, of course. You know, speaking English right now, or speaking in Hebrew or Greek, you know, well, that's a price for Well, it's not doing any good. <laughs> um, and so there's so many different adaptations, but within reason, within a particular amount. Um, 
there are 24 different Catholic families, different rites. Um, but the principles are the same, the liturgy makes are the same, um, but there'll be differences inside. Um, and, and so, whether you do the offer of beginning of Mass or middle of Mass, uh, whether you do uh, Greek chant or Hebrew chant, whether you celebrate this fan or that thing, whether the priest stole is connected down the center or cross, you know, and patience. Mm -hmm. But it's still going to be consecration, it's in the different line, the point for God. All those things are going to be in place, but it comes from the cross. Uh, but so, adaptation to a degree, but it has to again, still point back to our Lord because we're forming ourselves again. Yeah. It's been a while since I yeah, joined the church and then coming back. And during that time, uh, and I know, you know, with COVID and everything, probably good practice, but we, we stopped uh, uh, giving wine. And I understand the bread is full. Hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, <don't> know. <laughs> uh, I like it. What is it? Yes. And um, so, at what point did we stop offering the, the blood of Christ? Though I know I understand that the body of Christ incorporates both. Right. But incorporates both. one species, the host, yeah, as the fullness of Christ, by the soul. As does the one other species of the appearance of the wine. And I'm being very precise because it is important. <laughs> I miss that though, um, because at my old parish we always. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, and, and so this is a complicated okay, question, but we'll have to answer it briefly. Um, and I wanted to ask it afterward if it's had more time. Left. But historically, there are difficulties distributed to both species. Both are required as part of Matthew Christ's mm -hmm. The reception of most species are not required, except by the priest. Um, not, we don't have to receive any of the Mass. We still worship God in Mass. And surely you can't receive it. I mean, in fact, half the time, surely you must. Easy you can't receive um, Historically, there's been several difficulties. And so if you look, there's all that there has been um, different attempts. And so there are three different ways they distribute the Christ's blood, or the Eucharist under the appearance of the Christ of, of the wine. Um, the first way is drinking the chalice, which we'll talk about a little bit. The second way is the tincture, which is taking the host and dipping the host in the Christ's blood, receiving both. And the third, and the third way is the spoon, mm -hmm. big spoon, and this is the East Rite Church and so on. Mm -hmm. And the fourth way, which I have ever seen come across here, is by a golden straw called a fibula, I believe. Oh, right yeah. there. What they do is they have half the straw in, and you open out for the. Oh. Oh, no, but the problem with it, the problem is, is a you have the question of stowage, uh -huh. and so it's very, it's very. A host falls, God forbid, or he's pretty much not. Um. Secondly, you have the problem of the knots. You know, so it's, it's, it's really easy to get uh, too much. Then you have the problem of ministers. Mm -hmm. um, and fourthly, you have the problem where when things are treated as common, when things aren't treated as reserved or, and special, meaning our hearts are going to treat them that way as well. Um, and, and so when you have 25 ministers, so that one does it, and it's not. You know, it, 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 it not always, but it easily, easily becomes the danger mm -hmm. where it becomes a, a misunderstanding of what's going on. And so, in the 15th century, as a response to a heresy, Martin Luther, when the Martin Luther said, heresy are both species, or, or there was, um, you were missing something. The church, as a response to the heresy, said that people don't receive from the house. There are five grand years that people receive the most. Nineteen seventies, they decided they're willing to allow or to leave mm -hmm. But the problem is, you have now this um, the way it is written in the books and in the law of the church, the way it's often done, are very different things. 
Um, and so what the church law says is uh, on certain occasions, uh, on certain seasons, certain times, that can specify when they are. And it says that if there is someone, another priest or a deacon, um, it should only be done in rare occasions for emergencies. It says you have somebody who is assigned to it every week, on a rare occasion of emergency. Um, because what happens is when it becomes this common thing, you begin to think, I need this, or I want this, and I'm missing something. As even if you don't intellectually not missing anything, if your heart's in missing something, there's a problem there. Right? See, to me, it was like an ultimate expression of faith, because if I truly believe that was the blood of Christ, and I drank from the same cup as everyone else in the church, mm -hmm. It wouldn't matter because it's the blood of Christ, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to get sick. I'm not gonna know. Yeah. And no, so yeah. for me, that's how it was presented to me. And, and, and that is a different question, whether you get sick or not. Whether you yeah, it was like it was like I have so much faith <clears throat> in it that this is the blood of Christ. The, 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 the question that I was bringing up is: people believe they're missing something. I miss this. I oh. want this. I, there's something that's not not, not not complete about the mass. Oh, I see. And if that's the attitude in their heart, then there is something. Even if it is just a feeling. Mm -hmm. um, but then, then there is something that's not quite kosher. <clears throat> right? Because what they're saying is without receiving both of these ways, I'm missing something. You're not. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's one of those things where there, unfortunately, are a lot of questions that have been answered mm -hmm. for us. We were, we were given some very open-ended, some very, um, where the law is not enforced, it's hard to know how to enforce. <laughs> in those areas, with the, with the, with the, again, you have all these laws saying, um, extraordinary ministers should, should only happen under emergency circumstances. That's what, that's the law says. But the practice is not that. And no one addressed it. Mm -hmm. And so you have this big discrepancy between what's on the books and what's on the practice. Mm -hmm. That's what's the right thing to do. You go to the practice, but you follow the law. And, and I think one of the things you've touched on yeah. is this was what was going on in the church for 500 years ish. This is what's been happening since the 70s. I've only been around since the 70s, so right. for my life, this is how it was. Right. And right. now it's different. Yeah. Yes, and, and my, my life's probably 500 years ago. Or a thousand. Right. Yeah, I didn't and, know there was an option. And so there's this perspective yeah. that right. we might not even have right. until right now. Yeah. Right. And, and this is exactly, you know, this is exactly why I wish we were here. <laughs> Especially as a pastor. Right. Because we're, we're given these things where there's, it's very open ended. Uh, where there is, you know, it's not the desire is bad, I'm not saying that. You know, the desire is always good to receive for us, it's always good to desire for us. And it is a, the Lord gave us both species. We receive both, and you know, how can I be a bad thing? How can that be a problem? You know. But, you know, at the same time, we do have this, this question and, 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 and this confusion uh, where people are so used to having both. That they, they, they feel that like a big big law, they're missing something. Um, where you do have, again, what's all on the books is people receive Christmas, Easter, and other ceremonies. Not what happens. To where the law on the books says, should be preached a deacon, and not the words. Not what happens. But not enforced. So if you just receive the cup, then you would also be receiving Absolutely. the whole. Absolutely. Yeah, and in fact, um, the certain circumstances, so if you were dying of some cancer, or someone dying of some cancer, and, and they couldn't have received the host, mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I come to them with, with the precious blood, with the precious blood. They can still receive our Lord as we have. Why are there still some churches that are offering the precious blood and we're not? <laughs> well, that, that's all it is. So, one of the difficulties with the flip situation is that every diocese did their own thing. And so this diocese, the bishop has said, or no way. He could tomorrow lift that. Lift that. He could tomorrow say, <coughs> we're all going to do it. He could, he could say, we're not going to do it. I don't think he's going to do that. But 
It all depends on the bishop, it all depends on the place, it all depends on the Which all leads to confusion. <laughs> because it becomes then very um, arbitrary. And the match should be arbitrary. And one of the difficulties, when, even when the mass appears to be arbitrary, then it's really hard to understand how to work about correctly. Because anything's not arbitrary, it's how to work about it. But if the mass appears arbitrary, where you say, well, I like Father Locke's mass, I like Father Jerry's mass, or I like Father Sutton's mass, it's not my mass. And even the appearances of oh, my mass is better, or nicer, or greater, there's a problem. Even if it's not the sin, but there's a problem where people are, are picking and choosing the mass they like. Because it begins to be about the priest, it begins to be about the preference, it begins to be about, and again, even if there's an attempt to do the right thing, right? I mean, and so we live in a time and place where unfortunately there aren't a whole lot of great answers. Uh, because, you know, you have to make choices. <laughs> so, not that Sundays are busy. Yes. You can just host like an hour before Mass catechesis. <laughs> Every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done that before. I have a case on the mass and many people. Is that right? So, what about those who prefer the Latin mass? And so, if it becomes about my preference, as opposed to. If, so, it can be a problem. So, again, it doesn't matter whether you're. It matters the wrong, wrong term. <laughs> it does matter. Uh, so, the, one of the differences we have that I think honestly is a grave mistake. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. 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 Wait, is we have options. So much so that you can have five priests who all are doing the best for the world. They can all be perfectly follow the, the, the Mass and have five completely different Mass. And the problem with that is that people are become forced to then pick and choose their preferences. They become forced to pick and, the priest is forced to pick and choose preferences. The priest is then forced to pick and choose what principles do you need to celebrate Mass from option that we can or could be. You know, do you celebrate wearing white lessons or green lessons? That's not really not a big deal. But what it does is it splits and separates this to lose the appearance, at the very least, of there being different. Um, what's the word way for this? There is the appearance of, of there being um, a better version. Well, even beyond, even beyond that, I think it gives the appearance of there being no answer. Everything's on mm. It all is about it. It all is It's all about it. It's all about their conditions. And that's a fundamental problem. Um, and that, I, I think, is one of the main things we have on our side of Mass. In general, is because I think mean people on tension come to Mass doing their best. And unfortunately, we have a culture now, now, now where you're forced to pay your shoes. You're forced to go to You're forced to go, go by what you think is best. But it very easily becomes about yourself. Okay, but if you're if you're picking a, a, a different parish or a different priest right. because the priest that yeah. you have isn't spiritually helping you or or is making you lose your faith, or he's crazy, or he's preaching heresy, yeah, it's, it's not it's wrong to. No, no. She, okay. So, so, like, so, 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 so <laughs> 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 So so the problem is that. So the point is that first of all, we're in a culture right now, which even when done well, there are problems. There's confusion. Um, and this confusion can lead to issues on both sides of the spectrum. You can lead to people who are so really, really crazy and, and have clown masses, or preachers like the fact that they're clown costume, and things where people say that the mass is done Latin, that is about. Both are problems, both are wrong. 
That being said, what do we do when practically speaking, when we're facing these choices? Different question. Practically speaking, you have to have to say, okay, first of all, am I trying to work them? Am I doing the best to follow God we want to do? And then from the options, and if it is a question of options, then the question is, how do I best serve God, follow God, or myself to it? And we're given the options, and there are, you know, our, well, there's not one else. Well, there should be. But right now, there's not. We're not given that one answer. You do you still do the best you can to say, the best I can tell, this is the way I should do it. This is how I want to follow the Lord. This, this is how I believe the Lord wants me to follow. And the Lord will look at your heart and realize it's impossible to have one right answer. There should be. There used to be. <laughs> Um, and, 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 I, and I think that God willing will go back there again. Uh, because right now, I, I do think there is an intolerable tension. This, this is my opinion, take it by soul if you want. So, caveat, this, this, this is now me. So blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I, I do think right now there is an intolerable tension in the Mass, in the liturgy, the worship of God. Simply because of the fact that there's so many options, which are all valid, which will all be good, that you lead to the splinter of community. Of worship and becomes arbitrary. So even in this mass, we have this church right now, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I say a English mass, basically the English mass at Orientum, a Spanish mass, a Latin mass. I do my best to get all the they're all rubrically correct. All worship about point five. As best as I as I know, they are all worshiping God, pleasing God, and serving the Lord. But the problem is we have four different opinions, four different options, four different ways to do mass. Mm -hmm. And so you have there then this question of what's right, what's wrong, is it is it our right? It is simply about my preference. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be here is the Lord, worship him, come to him, know him, love him. And because of the coach living right now, that's really, really hard to do. I would say it's always impossible to do. Um, now, your principles, right? the principles are the best I can. You know, the principles are, you know, I have to follow the rubrics of the mass. The principles are, you know, I have, can't preach how I can preach the truth, you know, which comes from the church father of Christ himself. It comes from Christ himself and then the church and the church fathers. So that, they say the backwards. <laughs> he is a Christ, period. <laughs> he is a God. Um, and so obviously, again, there are things that are obvious. Well, that's, that, that, that's being the wrong way. If I'm preaching there's 12 gods, I'm preaching, you know, that don't go to confession, I'm preaching that sins doesn't matter anymore because we're very too smart. Um, I'm preaching heresy. If I'm um, doing things that aren't in the rubrics, you know, dancing around the altar, um, trying to sell a massive pizza, pop, popcorn, you know, I'm dressed in a clown outfit. You know, have you ever sat on a table like this and we're all just chatting about mass? And we'll get to go. <laughs> Please do. I need to contribute to the tangent that we're on. But um, have priests always given homilies, or did that come about like in priests always give homilies? No, it was always, always done with the mass. But the but the there used to be exams given. There used to be had had to, had to be experienced, and, <laughs> and, and the priest would be literally examined every five years, make certain whether God was like feebled or mentally ill or things. So, so John Vianney was, was for, for five years was called a simplex priest. So he was a valid a priest person who the priesthood. But he couldn't hear confessions. Because he got the moral theology who come to complex problems to be able to give good advice. And he, and he could he could not Confessions, and he could not preach. <laughs> wow. The first five years, because he was a late location, 27 or 27, mm. rather than 14, uh, so he was a late location in those days. Mm. Um, and so the first five years, they said, you know what, let's make sure you know what you're doing before we let them do these things. And so there used to be, at the back, you read books even in the 30s and 40s, mm. and, and it talks about. The examination given by the bishop, the young priest, you know, first would be, you know, 
before you get ordained, you don't need to be given with permission to go to those yet. The first be under a pastor, you can get, get experience from a pastor, the pastor can show them the ropes, but you practice speaking. And after a year or two years, you go for the bishop, to be given an examination. You know, with a little quiz, a conversation. Then they do that to Padre Pio, also something similar? Maybe that was, yes. Yeah, so, so, yes, so for a time, they took away these factors. Um, when they were trying to figure out what was going on, was he just making things up, was he faking things? We try to make code about itself. So, took away these factors. So the manual simple like priest for a time. Um, but yeah, so, so there used to be where every few years they had to go and get basically sort of out of the bishop to preach and to hear confessions. And you could lose it, you know, um, if you were doing a horrible job in the confessional or preaching heresy or if you're just a bad speaker, sometimes. You know, <laughs> that was, that was so smart that they stopped doing that. There's not enough. <laughs> Now, right? There, there used to be more priests, like you see more priests. Yeah, because like Michael Parish had like four. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it doesn't sound like such a bad idea. I mean, not nah. yeah, you know, especially in this world. Well, <laughs> there's but yeah. there's two different things going on. Right yeah, now, right. Yeah, you could see them doing that to people like you, like just to keep you. Right. Like to yeah. cut your powers off, kind of like you know, and the bishop could, right? Better I mean, priests rather than absolutely the bishop, bishop, bishop could. Um, so even today, the bishop, bishop could decide tomorrow, you know, you're preaching weird thing, you can't preach. Yeah. You can do that. And it could be for political reasons or whatever. That would never happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, but yes, I mean. They don't like you. you can't uh, do I, I do think, <laughs> the theory, I think, is right. In theory, yeah, I can see yeah, um, the negative side. And I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, for me personally, I have my personal experience. And I have a experience for how many years I'm right now. Yeah, I would say the places where I do least amount of training were on the least of them. I had one class here, I had two classes here. Okay. Uh, so, and in some cases, I got more than other people. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, and unfortunately, everyone has those skills. Remember, that's the thing. It is, you know, I have a stutter, I talk too fast. So, <laughs> it, it might be good to get help in this way. You know, it might be helpful that you know, maybe if I had, had a little more time, practice, and experience, it might, might be a better preacher. Uh, so, in I theory, we did it on purpose so we pay attention. Well, they can deliver it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's why the white print is out. These you can't understand me, just read it. But no, it, it is one of the things that I am constantly trying to improve on the work of because you know, I just remember that he. Now, what's funny about preaching, too, is that but certainly speaking well is an important part of it. A lot of people who are terrible speakers want to follow us. You know, who just, the, the way they preach, you want to hear God speaking. But in terms of, of being engaging speakers, in terms of all the tricks of the trade, they're not necessarily good public speakers. But they're good really models. And apparently, John Gannon wants those people. You know, where someone can't can listen to homily, they would say, oh, he, he, his voice is too high, and he, you know, he speaks too soft. And there's you know, technical, I mean, look at the technical aspects, he would say, on to the preacher. But he can perish. <laughs> you know, and everyone, people come for miles around, thousands of miles around, to come listen to the preacher to hear confession. So, um, while not necessarily the deal and all, I do, I do wish that there was more. Um, how do I get on that? <laughs> Golden cap. Golden cap. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question? I'm just going to up just a little bit. And I'm sorry, sure. we're not talking much about the Moses and all. But if you mentioned at one point we were talking about the both uh, species of the Eucharist. Yes. And that 
only special occasions made by the corpus Christiers but that you would offer both. And you said the um, needs to be given by a priest or a deacon. I pray it should be given by ordained hands, don't you think? A deacon I, I mean, it's ordained. I know. Yeah. That's fine. But you have these or these Eucharistic ministers that are not extraordinary Eucharistic ministers. And so I don't think yeah. uh, um, I think that's been abused. Right, and so, so that's again one of these questions that are out there, which, which we have a long practice. Long practice. And we have, we have these very open ended things where it's very confusing for people because there's not a great difference going on. Where mm-hmm. um, again, the law of the church says, given the home certain circumstances, like a wedding, um, funeral, Christmas, Easter. It really is very limited. And what it says is, is that it should be a priest or deacon unless there's an emergency. And an emergency would be, um, I think there's plenty of people coming to find how to show up. You know? And so my choice is make Mass twice as long or close enough who I know is trained and I know is going to do it. Other than that, to be priest or deacon. And so when you have a situation where you have every Mass, there are sort of ministers. There was a problem. Mm-hmm. And the argument is, and it so far it hasn't been addressed specifically, is a desire to people of both species. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's one of those things where the law and the practice don't match up. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there is this great confusion right now. Mm-hmm. And there is great difficulty right now because, because um, no matter what you just want to be hurt. <laughs> Right, the Bible is to say, if I pray about the period, but that's a hurt people. If I say, talk about the minister and the medium, that's a hurt people. So it almost no matter what you do, because of what's been done already, mm-hmm. someone's going to be hurt. That's not him, not him. Correct. But how you do it correctly, it makes it mean. So when I, I think most work before, it was how it when I was in seminary, I, I, I had a, a wonderful liturgy professor name of uh, uh, Bob Madame, and, and he, he was a beautiful, we read letters at the site of Hermano Cassius, and their charism in the order is liturgy. So he, he knew liturgy really well. He studied it, practiced it, the local sort of masses, it's the charism of their, of their, of their order, is to liturgy well, teach about and talking about some of these things, learning from this class, I took a special class, an extra class with him, extra credit classes, to learn liturgy and music and things like that. And I said at the end of one of the classes, you know, Father, this is so wonderful. I can wait to come back to my, my, my pastor. I can do these all right away. I can do these things and do away with man for that. He said, you know what? My grandmother used to tell me, he said, came from Poland in the five cities. And at the time, the man was all that. The time the mass was, no matter if in Poland or Russia or Germany or America, all the same mass, the exact same. But she never learned how to read or, or write English. Only Polish. Never spoke English. Was all Polish. He said, overnight, one weekend, they went from having mass in Latin, at Oriental, the communion room. Mass in English, thanks to the people, no rail, all power was gone, had back on the side. And this very pious woman who grew up in Poland, going to Mass every day, went from, went from being able to, all of a sudden, didn't know how to study Mass, and it was all wrong. He said, look, people here, who, who are good people, or loving God, serving God, saints, so, in some cases, maybe they haven't given that there. Maybe they haven't given things that are before before Mass. Maybe they give them the things. If you go in there, and one day change it overnight, but doing the exact same thing to them. Because they've been formed to pray God, to worship God this way, if it's not the master, even if it's not the way it should be. If you do it instantaneously like that, you'll be robbing them of the ability to worry about God in their own lives. And so you have to do things carefully and slowly. Yes for God, yes for Him. But recognize that people who are in front of you won't put their knees on. Which again, it's very frustrating to pass. 
<laughs> they have to be kept. We have to, we have to, but we also have to do it the right way. We have to get you know, people to see, you know, again, what's happening like this, where, where, where people understand, okay, you maybe it should be going in a little bit of a way. And it's not because I think, you know, everyone's idiots or they're stupid or they're wicked people. As I think things happen in the church where people were, were, were taught badly, sometimes liberally, sometimes by honest bad people. Priests are priests, but unfortunately, I'm unaccountable. And I'm sure there are things I, I have said or maybe said badly that some people are going to say, Oh, Father told me that. You know, <laughs> I thought I was wrong. You know, we're talking about it. Matter, unfortunately. And maybe it's my fault, maybe it's their fault. That's how it is. Both happen. <laughs> uh, where I say it perfectly and someone mishears me. Um, or I can take them back, make a mistake. Yes, you and I can make mistakes. <laughs> um, I know it's a shocker. But, uh, <laughs> um, so my goal has to be getting people to what's best, the best as I can. But to do so in a way that gentle and patient and a step at a time. Or it's not about me. So I want it this way. Or it's not about um, forcing people to do something right for them. Because again, if you try, you have to be more hard. Because so people lose their faith. They're going to pick a little head and pick it off. They'll, 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 it's, it's, it's a sad thing. It's an unfortunate thing. But if you've been taught to pray in a clown posture, I think that's a safe example. They haven't even been taught to pray in a clown posture. If you were taught, if you were taught that Father has to be a clown posture, and you have a relationship with God and love God through that. All of a sudden, Paul's not wearing a clown costume. <laughs> if, no one, if no one tells you the, the, the truth, all of a sudden, Paul's not wearing a clown costume. What's going to happen to your heart in relation to God? We all have to be confused. And you might even be a, be, be a saint. Worshiping God is, you know, a mistake. Does that, does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, so yes. So when it comes to the confusion issue we have right now, some of these things is we have so many options. But it's not one clear answer. Um, we do need to look to the direction. We do need to look toward the spirit. We need to look toward you know God ever changes. We do we have to be able to say what is the way God wants to do. The best to do that. We do need to say where there's been error or heresy or mistakes, you have to correct that. Sometimes it has to be slow. Sometimes it has to be slow. Sometimes it's all off the wall. It can't be slow. Right? If, if someone thinks, thinks that sacrificing, you know, cats in the dark of the moon is the way we're done, you know, maybe you stop it right in mind. Or some people think that they, 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 they can juggle the Eucharist, you know, or, or, or throw it on the floor. You stop that right away. Don't say, well, let's be patient with these people. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're all unique, we might understand and respond to one person differently and, yes. and hear the message <coughs> from one person and another. Sure. And it wouldn't be the same for everyone. Right. Uh, but the bottom line has to be there is one who is unique, and there is one who is being worshipped. Um, I and mean, we want to do it the best, the best we can, the best we can. And we're going to stutter and we're going to stumble over and make mistakes. The best we know how we have to do it saying, what does he want? Does him the most honor? What, how do I form myself to him? Uh, and it becomes about me, it becomes my preference, my desire. Um, Golden cat. Golden cat. She made you do it. I just still have to turn back on. He's still up there. Well, <laughs> it does seem important. I like how you wound all the way back around to that, though. It is now 7.30. So, um, this whole conversation, I think, um, hopefully it'll be good for too. Why don't we stop here? <laughs> you know, I said to myself, I have two pages. I can get you some pages. <laughs> It was sort of on topic. It was. No, it's, a good, it's, a, it's an important conversation. I mean, yeah. honestly, I, I do think these conversations have to be had. I do think it's important. We have to do it. It's important that we think about these things. And that's why the purpose of doing the Bible stuff. It's not just to learn about 
If this tube starts to run, what happens? It also has to be about how do I think about God serving now. It doesn't affect me now, so I have to know God now. What am I doing? Um, and so these are important conversations and important things to look at, important to think about and pray about. Um, yeah. 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 No. So. so no. Yeah. It just. I, I'll be used. That's all. <laughs> Two pages. <laughs> so I don't know what topic not to bring up. <laughs> or do, you know. Do you ever have those teachers you always know how to distract them in high school? And... <laughs> you did that too? <laughs> I was homeschooled, so, so that, oh yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it didn't work for me. <laughs> but I, I've heard stories. <laughs> 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 yeah, my high school union was pretty light. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so was my prom. <laughs> uh, all right, any other questions before we end the prayer? Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for coming and showing us how to be united to you and how to serve you in love. And worship you. Help us understand more deeply your design and to fill it more carefully in our lives. We all that we say and do be for your glory. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.